Hey, welcome to the Pro Football Ireland Christmas Special. We have got an absolute slate of games. Christmas Eve, Christmas Day. Stick with us this week. It's going to be great, great crack. Michael McQuaid, Mark Hogan, Michaela Fagan, Nolik Hanowicz, people. Uh, Mark, first off, we, we've got our, for people on the podcast, we've got our Christmas jumpers on. Now, for people that make it look like I'm wearing some sort of orange jumper, I actually am wearing a Denver Broncos jumper that my wife bought me last Christmas and it arrived on December the 29th last year. So this is the first time I'm wearing it, Mark. Uh, oh, you've nice. got your Cardinals jersey on or jumper on. Uh, one that I was given two years ago and have worn once for a podcast around the time. I wore it in Chicago last year on the 5th of December and a lot of people came up to me, which was really nice. And then this is my third time wearing it. So I don't know if they're the best bang for buck, these jumpers. But yeah, when you have this uh, podcast, it works out well, right? Michaela, we, we've been giving you wild guff about like jerseys and stuff. Not, like not, not even it's just great crack. But I have a similar thing where I've got like six Christmas jumpers to the Broncos. So do you have any NFL Christmas jumpers, or, or are you not a fan, or what's the crack there? I don't, I don't like Christmas jumpers, especially because I don't, I don't like women's clothing in the sense it's very tight. So the only Christmas jumpers I have are women's ones. So I don't actually have an NFL one because if someone asked me, what do you want for Christmas? I'd rather say, oh, like a mini helmet rather than the, the jumper. But I have my hat on, so I'm still festive. I have to say, these are like the 20, and I'm, we're not, it's not a fashion podcast, folks, but the, like, this is the 2021 jumper. I think this is the best one yet. R- really, really like it. So I, yeah, shout out to whoever got me this jumper, i.e. my wife. Let's, let's jump into it, folks. We've got... Uh, the NFL Sunday is on Christmas Eve this week. So if you're listening to this or watching this, we're, we thought, you know what? You're going to be wrecked. You're going to be out in the town uh, chilling out before Christmas. So let's get this podcast out a bit earlier and let's just talk around a number of different points because first off, Mark, it's Christmas. Um, it never stops in the NFL. Like, you know, we're two or three weeks out from, from the playoffs starting from the regular season ending and it's uh, it's scary biscuits it's squeaky bum time a full slate of games on christmas eve and then we got three games on christmas day um i guess before we get into the topics what's the standout game for you this weekend that you're excited for uh, i'm not 100 percent sure you know it's so funny you're dead right when you say that it's a strange week that never stops so my fondest memories of watching the nfl is going out on christmas or around christmas coming in after a few points and there's a game on the Cardinals played the Eagles. It must have been around 2018. And they it was the game that uh, David Johnson, the running back, had a massive run in it. And the Cardinals pretty much obliterated the Eagles. My brother is an Eagles fan. And I remember just how fun it was. So I think it's a bit of a shame that it's happening on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day because... You know, it's not the same, you know, it's not the same buzz, you know, coming in from a few drinks. I've, You know, it's easier to watch it with people around Christmas and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, I mean, is that a rant, rant, rant over? I, the standout game, I think we're going to be, <laughs> I think we're going to be kind of lucky that we get, maybe not the standout game. I'm excited for a couple of games. The Jets playing the Jaguars because of the playoff implications that tie along with that game, I think is mad. And then the Bengals Patriots. I'm going to talk about that a little bit later on. We'll tee it up, I suppose. We'll leave it there. But the ba- the Bengals Patriots, Bengals offense going up against that Patriots defense is a a theme that we're going to be talking about later on. Michaela, I'll, I will be in Fermanagh on Christmas night, about one one point one, not even like not point eight kilometers from Clonus in Monaghan. And uh, when I say it's in the sticks, it's in the sticks. So you can imagine me trying to tell my father in law that we're watching the Rams against the Broncos at nine twenty five. Yeah, um, good luck with that. Who would be wanting to watch the Broncos around Christmas time? It'd literally depress you. Uh, um, Russell Wilson got up against the Super Bowl champion Rams, but uh, here, <laughs> are you actually going to sit on Christmas night and watch these games? Because like, f- like that that Dolphins Packers game isn't bad, especially the Dolphins didn't mm. win. Like, yeah, like it's Aaron Rodgers against Tua, so it, it it's two good quarterbacks. Like I know Aaron Rodgers hasn't been having a great season, but to be honest, it's football. You're gonna watch it. I didn't even realize because I'm only watching the league of a couple of years that there is NFL football on Christmas Day and Christmas Eve. So it's like I can't wait because this might be a bit controversial, but I find Christmas Day is a bit of a letdown. So I will. I I think the build up to it is better if that makes sense. I think Christmas Eve is the better day. So I will be happy. I'm happy that there's football on, but the game I'm looking forward to is actually on Christmas Eve. Obviously my Eagles against the Cowboys. I think the Eagles are going to show everyone and show all those Cowboy fans up and all those Cowboy believers and just show that they're the, they're the better team and they're the, they're going to be what NFC championships, NFC champions going into the Super Bowl. 
Interesting, interesting. Let's let's talk about the picks towards the end of this broadcast, and that's a really interesting thing about Christmas Eve over Christmas Day. I made that mistake last year. I think Christmas Eve was better crack, and let's just say Christmas Day was uh, a quiet Christmas Day. Anywho, let's jump into the first topic on this week's uh, broadcast ahead of Week 16 of the NFL season. Um, we're going to focus on Brandon Sealy and the Chargers first off, Mark. Like, why is the question? And we're, we're not going to go into the whole Herbert talk here. The one thing I will say is about Herbert is they have got a two to three year window now before they must pay the man. They have that low cap room for Justin Herbert at the minute. They need to make use of that. Brandon Steely, you would think at this point or just around this point last year when the game against the Raiders happened in Las Vegas, you would think that he learned his lesson in terms of his management of this team and the mistakes that he has made. And he has, to be fair to Brandon Steely, he does try on certain occasions, to own up when he's wrong. They've had numerous injuries this season. This is a massive period for him now, going into the next month, because if the Chargers don't make the playoffs, do you think he continues going forward? Because for me, with the talent that he has on both the offense and defense, with the off-season pickups that Tim and Tom Telesco have made, I'm sorry, the minimum expectation for this team is not to get into the playoffs. The minimum expectation for this team is a divisional game in the playoffs, surely. And then next year, they should be looking at a championship game because of the talent that they have. And frankly, the small window that they have in terms of playing different players that aren't Justin Herbert over the next two to three years. You're spot on with absolutely everything you say. So much so that I want to jump in when you're... Because so much is going off (laughs) in my head as you say it, Michael, because absolutely they should be competing for those kind of accolades and they're i I feel as far as i'm concerned they're a year behind already he's only two years into the job he has a 17 and 14 record they barely missed the playoffs last year but they should have been in the playoffs last year look at the superstars that they have on the team i mean hey we talk about the chiefs and michaela you say that they're lacking in some star power in certain areas the chargers have Justin Herbert, who should be known, you know, sorry, don't need to go too much into Herbert. They have Keenan Allen. They have Mike Williams. They have Austin Eckler. On the defense, they have stars like Bosa and Derwin James, who are like top three in their position. And that's my problem with the Chargers, that they have no excuses. When they took on Brandon Staley, they knew that he was a defensive minded guy. And that hasn't, you know, helped them now as it's gone forward. I know you can say well, what Steve Wilkes is doing. It shows that defensive minded guys can also be productive on offense, just like we see Patricia doing in New England at the moment. But when it comes to what this LA Chargers outfit is, they've started to rise again in power rankings, say. But I was so down them and they were in the bottom bottom half for so long this year because and this is my stat of the week. This is what you're gonna see come up as a graphic sometime on PF Ireland or Pro Football Ireland, that they've had five wins by less than a field goal. Their average margin of victory has been four points. Their average margin of loss has been eight points. And against teams above 500, they're two and five. So when you're talking about teams that, like they've lost to the Chiefs twice, and we say, oh yeah, they just lost by the field goal. But then they lost to the Jags by 18 points. They lost to the 49ers by six points. They even lost to the Raiders by seven points. The teams that we want to see them beat, they haven't beaten. Their only impressive win this year has been against the Miami Dolphins a couple of weeks ago, and it was by six points. They Their other big win was the Texans by 10 points. And I suppose it all comes back to how were they just getting across the line? I mean, like I just said there, there was the whatever five games that it's by a field goal or less. They've just scraped across the line against the Cardinals by a point. They scraped across against the Browns by two points. And it always comes down and Stady admitted it after the Dolphins game about the energy around Justin Herbert that you can definitely believe in him. But it's we always come out saying, whoa, what a play by Justin Herbert. Imagine they were making those plays on a Patrick Mahomes level. When we see Patrick Mahomes like dump a ball off or have a really weird angle of a thro- throw, well, at least they're probably 10 points up when the Chiefs are doing that. Whereas when Justin Herbert's doing it, great and all as it is, he should be doing it from a much more comfortable position where they're competing for division titles, not seeing the Chiefs with three weeks to go, three games to go, clinching another AFC West. This was the year that they were supposed to step up when they, you know, got your Khalil Max on defense. I know they've had their injuries. Everyone has had their injuries. Their toughest is definitely Rashawn Slater. I mean, at left tackle, we've seen Herbert under pressure. But it's like, yeah, but Herbert's still been getting, off the, getting the ball off. Even the pressure hasn't been what's the problem with him. So when we start, start talking about Brandon Staley, the 
point that I want to agree most with you there is he doesn't just get into the playoffs and save his job. He has to compete in the playoffs. It's not good enough. They have to, especially with the way it's set up for them now. You said the next month is going to be important. We said that a month ago that the next three games are going to be important. And that's what I'm saying. They scraped the boy against the Cardinals. They beat the Raiders. They just beat the Titans by three points over the weekend in a less than convincing fashion as well. So I think it's definitely frustrating what Brandon Staley is doing. I was one of those people that was in on him even at the start of the season. I know the storyline is kind of dragging on, but there's two coaches I'll compare him to. Um, one was from his own coaching year and it was Nick Sir- Sirianni because Nick Sirianni had that awful press conference at the start and straight away you put him on, I suppose, ice skates. And he is showing out with the Eagles this year. He has, in year two, turned them around and they look awesome. And then the other one is Zach Taylor who is probably more comparable. After two years, we have Stady right now, 17 or 14. After two years, Zach Taylor was 6, 25 and 1. And he was definitely on the fence. But then they go to the Super Bowl last year. So maybe that points to, well, you can give him one more year if you really believe that he could do it in year three, just like um, Zach Taylor was able to do. But as far as I'm concerned, that he's holding them back. They have far too much talent and a ticking clock, like you said, when it comes to Justin Herbert, that his rookie contract has absolutely, absolutely been wasted. But not only has his rookie contract been wasted, a super, maybe it's a bit top heavy, but a super talented roster has also been completely wasted. Michaela, the Chargers just going to sort of add to what Mark said there. The Chargers have a 79% chance um, at 8 and 6 of making the playoffs at the time of recording. They play the Colts in Monday Night Football, they play the Rams in Week 17, and they play the eliminated Broncos in Denver in Week 18. Now, I do not think for the life of me that that game will be flexed, but I'm starting to think now that they're going to mess up in one of these in one of these next two games where everyone's going to be watching that game in Denver in Week 18 going, oh my God, could they mess up again? Where potentially, and we don't know at the time we're recording what the Broncos are going to do with Russell Wilson. Um, he didn't play last week. I personally biasly think that he shouldn't play again this season. So if he does play in week 18, there's a situation for Steely. Russell Wilson's trying to prove himself to the fans. There's so many different elements here. You've got that game on Monday night, but it's must-win situation for him over the next few weeks, not just for the immediate short-term future, but for his job as well. And as Mark's rightly said there, you know we have been saying this all season. But the pressure's massively on now. There's no point in sitting eight and six and finishing off eight and nine. No, but I think looking at their next few games that are coming up, the Colts, the Rams and the Broncos, they should easily beat them. I know Mark's been saying that they've been barely getting over the line, but they've kind of come back in on them in on themselves, you know, over the last couple of games. You know, beating Tua and the Dolphins was a big win for them. And I think it's given them a little bit of confidence. So they can go and they can beat those mediocre teams and, you know, ensure their uh, place in the playoffs. I think Staley is a little bit, I think he's getting to a little too much pressure. Like he's only in his second year. There's always going to be growing pains with, with head coaches who are just starting off um, with a team, but they didn't get out. They haven't been in the playoffs since 2018. And I think, people I just think the the star power that Justin Herbert has I think has put a lot of pressure on the team because they're like Herbert is like a top five quarterback he should be in the playoffs every year but you have to kind of forget they didn't have a uh like they had Philip Rivers obviously before that but they it was they needed to rebuild a little bit and they have and they they do have an amazing roster like they have a lot of talent and in fairness to them they did have a lot of injuries this year they had Mike Williams and they've came down that was their two top wide receivers they were injured so Austin Eckler and Justin Herbert had to carry the load a little bit and then Joey Boza is obviously injured as well like that that's one of their best defensive players um, after Khalil Mack and Derwin James. So I I think they're going to be grand now going into the playoffs. I um I don't think Staley's going to lose his, lose his job this year, but if especially if they get into the playoffs, because like I said, they haven't been since 2018. But if they go next year, he's going to be there next year and they're kind of struggling again, even with this roster all healthy. Um, and they're kind of maybe... I think they could maybe get to the divisional round this year, but if they go into the playoffs next year and they only make wild card rounds, even with everyone healthy, I think he could lose his job next year. But if they're going constantly into divisional rounds this year, next year, and their record's a little bit better, then then obviously he's fine. But yeah, I, I, I think it's too soon. The call quits on him. Interesting, interesting. That's really I, not I, over again, isn't it, Michael? <laughs> like, he overstayed his welcome. Now, now at the end of the I was day, in his last game. 
No way, really. It was, yeah, what, in Denver. How did this last game go? They were 21 points up and they didn't, uh, they weren't able to finish it out. Like, I'm being sarcastic there, but like, that was their thing with, <laughs> say, uh, with Lynn is that he could never see the game out. And, uh, you know, you, it was always put on the coach that the talent was there, whether it was Rivers or H- Herbert or whatever. The talent was always there. They seemed to always have a banged up offensive line, but even with the all pros that they had in 2018, um, that year, then what happened to Desmond King and all these players afterwards that it's, very frustrating i know there's not as many chargers fans as there is for other teams for different reasons and um, the owners have been a bit messy there what or how they dean dean spanos mm. how the spanos has um, looked after things and the move from san diego and stuff but it's just how does history keep repeating itself in la or for the la chargers there's not too many nfl fans in la period and we can talk about that in a different podcast in the off season uh let's let let's jump on the next topic and it's relevant so if you are listening to this on a thursday the game is on Thursday Night Football. But if look, if you listen to this Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, whatever, uh, just be aware that this game has happened, folks. So obviously do appreciate it. And you can fast forward eight to 10 minutes if you want, but you can listen to us now and hear our thoughts and laugh at us if you do want. Um, Thursday Night Football is the Jets against the Jaguars. Now, something tells me that the NFL gods put this together in February to March. I, I don't believe for a minute they're sitting in April doing this, right? So they're sitting in February, March, putting this together. The Jaguars going into the six and eight. The Jets are seven and seven. Um, now I know we're going to focus, folks, on the Jets and the situation there at quarterback, and we're going to look at it in the long term sense. But I think it'd be a miss to talk about this game. This is a great game, in the sense of usually this Thursday night game is not great before Christmas. It's like it's almost like a filler game. It's a huge game for both teams. Both teams need to win this game. Uh, the Jets have got a 25% chance of making the playoffs as it stands. The Jaguars have a 60% chance of making the playoffs. Their destiny is in their hands. All they have to do is win out and they've got a home game in Duval. Um, Mark, it's hard not to talk about this game but you know, at the time of recording, it looks very, very likely that that uh, Zach Wilson will be will be the quarterback for the New York Jets. Robert Sala on Tuesday saying that again in this press conference. So it's 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 intriguing. Um, I think if Jets fans had the choice between Mike White, Zach Wilson, and Joe Flacco, I think we all know who they'd want to play this week. But looking more long term, do you think it's unfair not to give Zach Wilson another season? Oh, I do you know what it's it's almost like. It, thinking short term will tell you what you want to think long term who would you want in this game this week and it's Mike White so why would I want Zach Wilson I mean he's had the he's had over a year now to get accustomed to the NFL and he hasn't been able to show it so when your playoffs are on the line there's no point looking forward to the future because you have them on the line right now when you should like the way that this uh, this season started and you know it's a point that I was going to bring up at the end but I'll bring it up now when they started to go downhill, do you want to take a guess when you might have put that? When Brees Hall went down, the running back, at that yeah. point, they were 5-2. and two. Since then, they're 2-5. and five. So that brings us to the 7-7 seven seven record. And what does that mean? It means, yeah, they were different on offense and you were able to rally behind uh, Brees Hall and not trust the quarterback so much or certainly not put it on his shoulders. They were able to complement the defense with that run game, you know, whether that's running the clock or not. So I think it was no coincidence that when it was put onto Zach Wilson's shoulders that he was completely found out. The New England game, absolutely, you have to, when you're going to talk about him and his future, I think that's when he lost not only the Jets organization, but Jets fans. That was the game that they had 102 total yards. Um, two, sorry, what was it? 103, sorry, total yards, two in the second half looking absolutely miserable and then he was asked after the game you know to let the defense down he said no since then i thought that was you know the nail in the coffin as things turn out mike white got injured and it's kind of funny when you look back at what happened after the game when mike white was knocked out last week robert sada said the tests were positive on the sideline you know he should be back so look how things have played out i'm not going to say it's thanks to the Tua thing but we know that mike white went to 10 different doctors trying to get someone to pass him to get into the game last week and they wouldn't do it but when i circle back to saying about losing the organization did anyone catch where mike white was just in the weekend gone by tight end cj ozama is producing a show on broadway yeah. and it was mike white was at the show i didn't see zach wilson there so i suppose when you talk about not only his play i mean yeah zach wilson over or last weekend back in the game and he had his chances 
first and second quarter, he had some great throws, 33, 40, 50 yard throws. But then when it came to the third quarter, he had the inter- interception. And at the end of the day, it was the defense that let them down when they had a lead in the fourth quarter. But when I look at the difference between Zach Wilson and Taylor Heineke, this might be, or sorry, not giving the game away here, Zach Wilson and Mike White. It reminds me of the whole story that's going on with Carson Wentz and Taylor Heineke. It's the second overall pick versus a guy that was picked in the fifth overall, just like in Washington. It's the second versus an undrafted guy. And I think like Mike White has it. I don't know, maybe we'll talk about it in the offseason. Maybe there's too many misses happening at the top of the drafts with these quarterbacks being found like so deep on, even the likes of Geno Smith hanging around for so long that he's able to, you know, play and bring Seattle to another level versus Wilson. You know, we latch on to what we think is correct. But I think that Mike White has been rallying. It showed even in the losses that the guys were around him um, there a couple of weeks ago. And yeah, he's definitely who I would want for this game. And I think if I want him for this game, it's not like he's that much older than Zach Wilson. I sh- think he showed a lot more progression and a lot more in the locker room, obviously, that he's who I'd want long term. I don't know about over anyone but if you're talking about those three quarterbacks himself Lacko, wilson yeah mike white i think has to be the guy yeah i think you know the the the, the, the whole flacco thing is a bit of a fairy tale like he's he's done i mean he's he, he's a backup and he's happy enough to be a backup he's certainly not happy going by the history of things michaela to uh to help young quarterbacks in the league and he's made it he's made that very clear in the past uh, in different teams um i i look michaela at the way that the uh, the mark has mentioned it about about, about certain players you know, Garrett Wilson said he would not die for Mike White, but he would go to war for him. The Mike White offense seems to bring more of a toughness to this Jets team that need the offense to work more. And when you've got guys like Garrett Wilson and CJ Zuma speaking up for him, it to me, and maybe I'm wrong, it seems that he's really, really got the dressing room in New York or in New Jersey. And if they can find a way, maybe this week's too early in terms of week 16 Sunday. But if they need to win their last two games... I'm I'm betting on Mike White and long term if Mike White can get this team to the playoffs whether it's one game or two games whatever for a run it would be an incredible achievement first time in what is it 12 you know is it 12 years I'm I'm right in saying that Mark 12 years yeah um, first time, last yeah. time I checked was last year and it was 11 years so do the maths I think you're spot on well I done intermediate maths at GCSE so uh, 12 years well, done accountancy as well don't, don't ask me how I done both of those things Could, can't count in my life 12 years it would be an incredible achievement, but you would look, and surely now, Michaela, they have this luxury of, they've got these games over the next two to three weeks that, yes, they must win, but they also have that opportunity to see what a guy like Mike White could be in week 17, week 18, and go in and see exactly what they have before they make a decision that got down the stretch, which you don't need to make for the next six months. They can make mm. it privately, but this needs to be the time where you're looking at a guy like Mike White, where he had that game against the Buffalo Bills and the sheer toughness that he had take it up again and again and again and play on is something that you cannot put a price on in this league with certain players. I like the the pers- I like Mike White's personality and his toughness and the way he holds the locker room. But for me personally, Zach Wilson's only in his second year. Now he's been abysmal this year. He has six touchdowns and six interceptions. You compare that with the guy who went ahead of him ahead of him, Trevor Lawrence he is Trevor has 24 touchdowns and only seven interceptions trevor uh, Ter- trevor lawrence is tied what was he tied fifth for touchdowns on the year which i didn't think he was that high but obviously T- trevor lawrence was kind of a generational talent when zach wilson was taken in the draft i think it was kind of like he has a high ceiling but he is a little bit of a, a like a little bit you're taking a punt on him basically like you don't know how he's going to turn out and i always thought it was very odd in that draft the way trey lance and um, Zach Wilson shot up against because um, I always thought quarterback one was Trevor Lawrence, quarterback two was Justin Fields um, but Zach Wilson kind of I, I think he definitely deserves another year I, it must be very depressing being a Jets fan spending really really high picks on these quarterbacks and when they picked Sam Darnold in 2018 and then they missed out on Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson and then they picked um Zach Wilson number two overall and to me they they missed out on Justin Fields I think Justin Fields is going to be better in the long run but I'd like to see I think 
you know, Mike White isn't going anywhere for me. I don't think a team's going to come in and want him to be their starter. So for me personally, I'm, I'm kind of like, I want to see what Wilson can do. I want to see if they can change his maturity a little bit. So why not just play him for the rest of the season, see if they get into the playoffs. If they do, they're, uh, they're going to be knocked out in the wildcard round. And then maybe that will feed Wilson's hunger to want to win and want to be a good player and kind of be one of the best. But Kind of even in the off season, you look at the 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 talk that was surrounding Wilson. It was stupid, childish, childish, immature stuff. It was about him going out with his mom's friend or something like. Why? And everyone was cheering him on. I'm kind of like, why is he feeding <laughs> feeding into an ego? He's twenty three. It's, it's like, social media though. Like I mean, it was it was mad crack. Like at the time, it was nuts. It, it, it was insane. It was it was funny, and I think it can be. But I'm like there's a question about his maturity don't be feeding into a, like an immature ego thing like he thinks he's going to be great doing that and getting all the kind of pats on the back for it and maybe that's one of maybe that's stupid but off-season talk is one of the reasons why he he isn't playing well this season maybe he's too, too big for his boots and he thought he didn't have to put in as much work but like I said, a, a, spending a second overall pick on that guy and he's only in his second year you have to give him at least one more year Mike White's going to be there next year anyway so you play him halfway through the season next year and he's not the answer. He's not the answer. You can throw in Mike White then and see what Mike White can do for the rest of the season. But yeah, I think play Wilson for the rest of the season, see if they can get into the playoffs. If they do, maybe that can change a little bit of his personality. And then if he doesn't work out, you have Mike White next year. So that's what I think. All I can think of is breaking bad and Mr. White. Uh, I will say I did feel bad for Zach Wilson when he went down in preseason. Um, I really, really felt bad for him, and at least he has come back to an extent where he is, as of the time of recording, playing on Thursday night. Uh, let, let's see what happens. Do you know what, though, Michael? It's so funny that you say that. I felt sorry for Jets fans at the time, thinking that we weren't going to get this assessment year. That was what my first tweet at the time was, and it's at least we have gotten them back on the field, and they've seen it, because we all knew going into this would be an assessment year. I 100% agree with Michaela. I think because of the investment in the second round pick, that they will play him next year. I guess when the question is put to us, who would we rather, it's kind of a different question. I do think they'll stick with him, but um, I, I, I think it's a sinking ship. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Let's let's have that conversation pre-free agency about a sinking ship. I like that. I think what they've done with Robert Salas class. Right. Anyway, look, let's 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 move on. We're gonna have a Christmas theme this week. Um and for the people on the podcast going Christmas, yeah, Christmas is this Sunday. December the twenty fifth happens once a year. Uh, as we said at the start of the broadcast, start of the podcast today. Uh, full state of games Christmas Eve Christmas Day um, and Thursday Night Football again we talked about there now between the Jets and the Jaguars in this segment we're going to talk about uh, if we were the NFL Santa it doesn't have to be for our team it can be for any team in the league all 32 teams if we could get a team a gift what would it be and I'm going to start off uh, and I'm going to get a gift for the Indianapolis Colts I am going to uh, present a card to the fans to kick Jim Irsay out of Indianapolis and potentially uh, Chris Ballard because I think it the whole thing the whole shebang needs a complete rebuild to an extent where you need a quarterback you need an OT wide receiver quarterback where else do I go here they can improve the tight end they can improve multiple defensive positions but it stems down to the just common sense approach you do not give a guy like Jeff Saturday a job in the NFL it's a joke my da, who has not watched a down in the NFL, apart from a game that we went to in Wembley a few years ago, could has got the same amount of NFL or college experience that Jeff Saturday has. Jim Irsay is all talk on Twitter. He consistently lets fans know when the roof's open, when it's not open. I mean, who cares? You know, like there's certain things. It's just like he's too involved for a guy in his position. It really annoys me, and the same happens with Jerry Jones. I understand the Jerry Jones element with the whole Dallas Cowboys thing, but for me, the gift that I will give to Colts fans this year is Jim Irsay needs to go, and he will go. So that there, there's my gift, and guarantee that that happened to be in the Super Bowl in five years. Mark, what's your gift for uh, a certain NFL team? I'm, I'm raging. You've taken one right out of my back pocket. I'm not going to say Jim, I'm not going to say Jim Irsay, but it was the same thought process as being, being a big more backup quick. one. No, I I have one. I, I'm still going to run with it. I'm being a bit greedy looking at my own Arizona Cardinals. And I said I would gift them an owner who isn't a fan because 
I don't know. We we didn't touch on it. It was it, it's a crazy story what's going on in Arizona at the moment. Steve Kime last week, the general manager, took sick leave, and a lot of people wishing him well, like I did, and I just thought things are bigger than football. So if it's mental health related, if it's anything related, we don't know. But shortly afterwards, it comes out that Sean Coogler, the offensive line coach, who was fired before a Monday night game in, I think, week 14. It was in November, November 20th, I think it was. Sean Coogler was fired for inappropriately touching, I think, a woman. Now, that has to play out, and I'm, I'm not laughing at the fact, and I won't be laughing at this. Steve Kime, it seems like it was a mistaken identity. Steve Kime allowed the firing of the offensive coordinator Steve Co- or Sean Coogler, who looks like him, and Sean Coogler says that the person was trying to identify Steve Kime in the incident. So Steve Kime wasn't taking off for mental health and all like that. It was because, yeah, maybe it's a mental aspect because he's like, I can't deal with this. His uh, wife, his kids, they've appeared on Hard Knocks once upon a time. They were on the um, the other show, the Cardinals in season, the Amazon show. Um, all, or nothing. all or nothing all or nothing and you know he comes across as a family man even in this season's hard knocks he is shown at one of his son's uh, high school games so how does this tie into the whole steve uh, into the whole michael bidwell he has been a fan and there's a culture there of steve Kime has been there and look i thought that too much was being thrown steve Kime's way but a culture change absolutely needs to happen and needed to happen before now. But instead, he gifted Cliff Kingsbury and Steve Kime with contracts last offseason. Now, I have been speculating and it hasn't been talked about anywhere else. I would love to know what's the wording put into those contracts about how they're able to become void or something if a successful season doesn't happen. I don't know what kind of language that would take. But Michael Bidwell is too cozy with Steve Kime. Um, Steve Kime, if this is in any way through, should have been gotten rid of straight away because that's an all-time story in the NFL. If a general manager is willing to throw a coach under the bus when it comes to sexual harassment after the year that we've just had. And when it comes to Michael Bidwell, I met him in London once upon a time, really nice guy. I used to love his approach being so hands-on when he got COVID during the COVID year, he had a relationship with a lot of the players that he did go into them. He said, please get the vaccine or whatever, because this thing is miserable. He is a pilot like it, it, and fly and flies the team or bought the team a jet. And he's great for, I suppose, camaraderie, it seems. But he is too invested in how players are doing and stuff like that. And he's not ruthless enough. So um, I think that turned into a bit of a rant. I'm sorry, Michael, but uh, that's what I, I would gift the Cardinals an owner who isn't so much of a fan. And obviously, we are not affiliated with the NFL or National Football League, and that is all, of course. And you've mentioned that numerous times, Mark. It's all speculation. They're it's allegations. Interest. They're allegations. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's allegation. It's it's important to note that it is an allegation at the moment. And first, I've heard of that. And that's that's oof, first I've heard I, of it I, as well. Yeah. Oof. Uh, okay. Interesting gift for Cardinals fans, Michaela. Uh, what's your thoughts for a gift? Uh, who's the team first off? Um. Well. The team first off is your team, the Broncos. Can I guess what it is? Because this is my beef. I'm just going to jump in here. Like they have the richest owners in the league, right? Mm-hmm. The guy is worth like thirty billion. Like he was pre. Like I think he lost like a load of money this year in Walmart or something. I would give them two hundred and forty-five million dollars on the cap, and let them write off whatever Russell Wilson's contract is. No. No, yeah, <laughs> it's too early to be that's doing that. That's what I was going to do. Let's, I didn't want to focus on my team, but that's what I was going to do. No, I was, um, I obviously don't need to be like Mark and pick my own team because I'm going to jinx this now saying this. The Eagles don't need anything. <laughs> They're oh dear. perfect. Oh, they God, here we go. I've There's jinxed the, it. Uh, the, the time jinx. stamp for February the 13th for the Eagles. Don't need, here we go. Sorry, sorry. They They're probably veto. even going to get knocked out now in the first round after me saying that. Um. I think they no. need a veto on um, the defensive co- coordinator Strickland, Strickland uh, becoming a head coach, or sorry, the offensive coordinator becoming a head coach. So I think if you could have a veto to apply to some of their coaches, because that coach franchise tree, tag was... on a quote on a coach, no doubt. I like it. I like it. Yeah. Um, no. So anyway, I um, if I was giving a gift, I would give the I like the Broncos franchise. I like one of the big things for me is like stadiums. For some reason, I love stadiums. I love the Broncos stadium. Um, so. 
I I do like the Broncos fan, and I obviously have to say that because Michael's a fan. But um, I would get rid of Nathaniel Hackett, and I would like to see an offensive-minded coach brought in. So I would gift them either Kyle Shanahan or Sean McVay, and just solely ca- so we can see if Russell Wilson still has that star power in him. Because I I like I said, I think I've said this before. I don't think I don't like Russell Wilson now to, to be fair, but I don't think his per performance and the Dem- Denver's per performances are him to blame. I think it's a coaching thing. So I would love to see um a really like hailed offensive genius like Shanahan or McVeigh to come in and see what Russell Wilson could do if they were the head coach and they were coaching him. Obviously, you know, you're, you're preaching to the choir here, like big time about Kyle Shanahan. I mean, the, Mark, the Broncos could have had Kyle Shanahan at one point and for some reason, out of pride or whatever, that didn't happen. And for people that maybe haven't watched the league for a long, long time and listened to this podcast, Kyle's father, uh, Mike Shanahan, won two effing Lombardi trophies with the team as a manager 20 years ago so yeah anybody would be nice I guess as a head coach anyone at all would be nice yeah I wish Any I'd other gifts? That, I wish I'd taken that one actually from uh, Michaela I want to play uh, as Kyle Shanahan to the Arizona Cardinals if I can't please it's funny I think when you say about the Broncos getting him I wonder did his dad actually affect him getting hired you know is that the 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 Shannon's offense was was toast at that did. time it all came yeah. out he definitely did because there was a pride thing between John Elway and Shannon there was 100 percent. I mean but, like Mark you've been to Denver you've seen Shannon's restaurants with like ever like I mean they're both very very well-known figures and I think what Kyle's done with his career is to be admired but they, they 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 could have been like there's not there's an alternate universe where Christian McCaffrey and Cal Shannon are in Denver. That's if the reality. Want, of it. If we want to give out some more gifts, I don't know. Do you want to go around the table again? I definitely have go some for more it. Go me. for it. I go for it. Um, I I guess there's honorable mentions. I mentioned at the top of the show. I would definitely give the Chiefs some more star power, so they they might be able to impress Michaela over there. I might give the Green Bay Packers some QB stability because of what's going on with Aaron Rodgers. Maybe a dome for the Buffalo Bills taxpayer after all the money that they're going to be paying and then they they weren't even offered a seat it seems in the stadium the other day it was filled with six feet of snow and every single one but if I was to truly give a gift to a team I de- I'd look over at the Tennessee Titans and give them back the 2022 NFL offseason the AJ Brown trade is blowing up massively in their face of course what happened when he played against the Eagles and had his couple of touchdowns uh, two or three weeks ago at this point was the highlight of it all trading Burks does seem to be a good talent in, and you know, he's going to have a prosperous career. It seems, but AJ Brown has just gone from strength to strength this year and is absolutely nuts. They gave him away for the same pick that they used on trade on Burks. It's not a like for like, or, you know, it's not a fair trade. I suppose I know AJ Brown had to get paid, but if you look at what else happened in the off season, it kind of ties into that is the general manager, John Robinson was offered a contract, which he gladly took and signed. And he was fired two weeks ago because the owner, Amy, Adam Strunk, isn't that her name? She said that she wasn't even really kept in the loop of it, that they were going to trade away AJ Brown. <laughs> so he lost the contract after they gave him all that money. So I think it's really showing up the Tennessee Titans. I, I'm not going to say it's a shame. I think they got their moment in the sun. I have said it before. I think the Tennessee Titans fan base can be a bit, you know, tough in the eyes yes. when you're scrolling through Twitter sometimes. That it is nice that it w- might now allow the Jaguars to take another step. But in terms of where the Titans are going, it's certainly backwards because that offense is, as we've said before, so reliant on Derrick Henry that it's a, a shame how quickly it came down for them. And in, in, in a division that doesn't have a you know massive city or something that it's buoyed to, and you kind of need that because you know even in the NFC East when it's at its worst, you still have Dallas and New York markets you know that are keeping it afloat. That the AFC South seems to be drifting to irrelevance, really. Michaela, I'll jump in with one gift before I fire to you and we'll, and we'll move on. Um, where do I go here? Where do I go here? I would gift the Houston Texans to a random country. Just like roulette. We'll oh, I love that. Map. Fire them in there. Now, if it's China, we'll have games at like 7 o'clock on Sunday morning our time. Be sweet. I was like, and it's the Texans and people will start getting onto it and who knows what could happen there. Um, 
there's so many gifts you can give. Like maybe we could instead of maybe making them do that, we could maybe make the Texans play in London for the next twenty years or something, something silly like that. There, but uh, have you any other gifts in your mind, Michaela? Maybe a couple of draft picks for the Carolina Panthers. They've got enough already, haven't they? Oh, I just oh, I don't. I'm sorry. I'm still stuck on Houston Texans being gifted to another country. What about like a pass for Baker Mayfield that he must play ten games next year for a team, the team of no choice, whoever it is. I'm joking. Yeah, no. Um, I <laughs> I'm not even gonna say what I think about. Um, I actually did think when we were picking our gifts, I was like, you know what? I'd love the Houston Texans to be relocated, but I'm very um hell bent on. <laughs> This probably sounds really bad coming from like an Irish and European person, but I'm hell bent on the NFL team staying in America. I think that's the whole. I I love America, so like that's the whole thing for me. It's like it's just they're just such a part of American culture. Like I don't want to see them. Maybe I'll accept a Canadian because obviously there's Canadian teams in the NBA and stuff like that, and and in the NHL and ice hockey. So like I think that that would be doable. But no, I'm very the staying in the North American hemisphere, but. My other gift that I'd have for a team is I would gift the New York Giants a top five quarterback. I would want to see what the New York Giants could do with Justin Herbert or um, Joe Burrow or something like that. I want them to have a top five quarterback because obviously now, what are they now, Um, sitting at eight and five, that's not bad for a team that they do have a quarterback. He's okay. He's average, but... They haven't picked up his fifth year option, so we don't know what's going to happen with him next year. But for a team, for a team that's set in New York City and are obviously they're more successful than the Jets, I think New York Giants fans and the city of New York deserve a star because it's one of the greatest cities in the world. I have NYC tattooed on my fucking ankle. <laughs> I love it that much. You think I'd be a Giants or a Jets fan? Um, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> but reactions is he's like, what? Is it went from being a quarterback to? Is it just NYC or is it, is it or is it or is it the New York Giants? Because we could have like a no, bat- it's not the New York Giants. It's NYC, like the like the city. And then I also have one on my arm that's for Vegas. It's the Queen of Diamonds because I like Vegas as well. But um, no, I think New New York City is one of the best places in the world, and it's obviously one of the most famous. And I think for the most successful New York team being the Giants, I think they deserve a quarterback who's a star. And not on because I, I just, like I said, it's just an amazing city. So I'd want them to have an amazing quarterback because I even they're an NFC East um, rival, but I, I don't hate the Giants. I actually kind of like them. So yeah, I would give them a, a Herbert or a Burrow just because I think they'd go very far with them. Obviously, they need a few pieces on defense still. But I'd love to see if they had a, a, a top five quarterback, would those re- receivers be getting involved in the game a bit more? So that I'd give the New York Giants fans and the city a star quarterback. Yeah. Um, Phil Sims tweeting during the game on Sunday Night Football saying that Daniel Jones has done enough to earn his spot next year. Ha, 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 ha. No chance. He's had enough time. Let's, let's move on. I, I agree with all your thoughts, folks. I'm liking the gifts. I mean keep them coming feel free to send me gifts uh info at pro football that i <laughs> oh my god you really you went for or sterling <laughs> i'm joking i'm joking right here um let's like, it's funny because we're like it's it's a christmas special we're gonna really try and have a bit of crack here um and we're trying to relate this to an irish audience this is not just an nfl podcast it is at the minute because it's the nfl season i want to talk about college football local football in the off season and talk about a range of different things and i, I had a conversation with someone quite close to the college football game between Northwestern and Nebraska in August and talking about what like the next step would be for for a local game. Um, I think sometimes when you talk, Mark, to people in Ireland, and I'm talking about fans, you maybe do sometimes get that, and this is not for me to be negative, you do sometimes get that negativity where it's like, oh, sure, we'll, we'll never have a game. Why would we ever get an NFL game? Well, well then... Like I, I think it's a possibility, and that, that's a whole different conversation. But um, if there's a, the infrastructure there, why can't Dublin have a bowl game in between Christmas and the New Year? It would be unreal for the economy. It would be absolutely mad crack. Could you imagine the crack if it was like the, I don't know, the Clon the Kilty Black Pudding Bowl in Dublin between you? Like you could literally any college would bite your hand off to get into a bowl game. It would be perfect. Yeah, 
surely. Yeah, I, look, I'm not 100% on the setup of how it all works. I know you do want to get into your bowl games, and then there's, you know, problems that they... <sighs> The big teams get their ball games because it's oh, like injuries and stuff. And yeah, yeah. yeah, but I suppose why you would like it is you're going to get a powerhouse and look at what's happening next year. We're getting a powerhouse game with Notre Dame coming over. It's been talked about for three or four years. You and I behind the scenes are talking to NFL journalists in Tottenham and they're looking forward to this game. There wasn't that same buzz around Nebraska Northwestern as fun as the experience was, as fun as the game was. You kind of departed and look it'd be smart for college football as well because you're making fans then i still get a uh, the nebraska corn huskers coming up my twitter feed because i guess i interacted with them back in the time and it comes up followed by and then names you know a few followers that we have in common that wasn't obviously there a year ago so i think it would bring the college game to the next level i think look at peter skorensky the left tackle he's going to go top 10 certainly in the draft this year I was buzzing to see an NFL player like that. You're thinking, okay, he could be like a you know big name in years to come. That you, we don't always get that. I mean, it depends on the game. I know that Boston once upon a time came who they had uh, Julio Jones and oh no, sorry, it wasn't Julio Jones. It was Julio Jones played for one of the Irish teams that came over, and Matt Ryan was with another team that come over. That there is teams that have had NFL stars passed through them but it's rare that we get her peter skoronsky or look maybe i'm gonna be tripping over his name there for the next few months but whatever his name was at least he was Scron, in Ireland. Scron. yeah well, don't play this one back to me in five years time he's the best left, left tackle in the year or in the league but i do think that that's where a bowl game would come in hey who knows if they're actually going to come and play it but when we just talk in the last segment about the you know glitz and glamour razzmatazz that goes along with the nfl being in america when it does come over here it is nice when you're able to add that extra element to it that kind of was lacking from northwestern nebraska as fun as it was last year michaela it's a really interesting prospect because at the minute we all get the whole week zero thing and that you can there's a lot of hype around that regardless of the teams because you know people over here ireland the uk europe etc are excited about the new american football season so that's a big thing to have but a bowl game would be awesome because you know you're going at least a month and a half behind a london game or munich game or whatever game it is next year and i can just stay at your gaff like i'm not paying 700 euro for a hotel so i'm not bothered <laughs> about the financial impact of it but like december i don't know like, why not have a bowl game before New Year's Day? Why not do it? People will, people will go to it. I'll fly over to it. Why not? I'll sorry, fly I'll drive down. To I'll drive down. <laughs> uh, my my down. family right now are, are hitting me. I will drive down the road to Dublin. But uh, yeah, it's a pretty awesome idea. Yeah. Oh, a hundred percent. Even when Northwestern and Nebraska was on, I was at that game as well. I think we were all at that game, and I we went i went with my friend who um has no clue about american football no clue does not know could, probably could not even name a team except for the team maybe i support and she was buying merchandise and she like it's it, even like a business opportunity wise it's there because people are like if someone who doesn't even like sports is buying a northwestern cap you know it like like it just it's just there for the experience and stuff like that and I definitely think, okay, England and London have got their games. Germany definitely deserved the game because when I was in London before the Germany games happened, the amount of German people was that was there, I didn't realize that Germany Germany people really like the NFL. And I even met a guy at like a rugby game and he said he used to play like defensive end in Germany or something like that. So, but I think Ireland will be the next spot for an NFL game. It has to be like, we're, we're the closest to America in in europe a lot of american companies are here and we obviously have that very um special connection with america obviously we've a lot of we had a lot of people um leave because of the famine there's a lot of um irish connections you know the sailors and the Rooneys and stuff like that so like i i don't know why we haven't had an an nfl game here yet because i think the connections is, is there every time i'm in america they're like oh my god you're from ireland can i come home with you or oh my god that's so cool <laughs> i remember one girl in vegas was like 
can I come home with you in your suitcase to Ireland? And I was like, you don't want to go to Ireland. <laughs> I don't know why. Well. I was just like, because I was in America and seeing all this like glitz and glamour. And I was like, Ireland is sometimes really boring. But I know obviously it is a beautiful country. So I can, I do understand why they love us so much. Um, and we love them. But yeah, a bowl game, we're going to be kind of the centre, I think, for college football in Europe now because we've obviously had the games. We're going to have Notre Dame, obviously famously known as the Fighting Irish um, next year. So that's going to be amazing. So, yeah, why not have a bowl, bowl game? Why not? You know, I'm sure a lot of American people would love to come over for Christmas time and spend it in Ireland. Um, so it's a great idea. The one thing I would say the next time there's a college game, please put on a tailgate. That is one of the big cultural things about American football is a tailgate. And there's definitely enough room around the Aviva, I think, to do it. So that's what I want to see more, a bowl game and a, and a tailgate. Oh, if you, you missed out on Tampa Bar because there was definitely a tailgate going on there. I went the night before in a class, but you know what? You have me sold on the whole Christmas element. I wasn't really thinking of, oh, if we had this every single year, it'd be like Christy Moore up in Vicar Street. Those tickets go on sale and they're gone in seconds because it's one of those things that is so Christmassy that it mm. has to be done. And I'm like, oh my God, yeah, the, um, here's the head of NFL or the college football game in Ireland. You need to, you're missing a trick here. Get the guys over. Imagine all the people coming over for their Christmas holidays. Be mad crack. Uh, and stick around if you are listening to this, folks. Obviously, thanks for listening. Stick around. You never know. Your boy, whoever, might get some access to you know some Notre Dame tickets. I'll, I'll try and help everybody out here. We'll, we'll all try and help people out. Uh, let's see what can happen over the next few weeks and months. Obviously, uh, great to see the game growing here. And I think if we do want an NFL game, we have to, and not just we have to support it. But, you know, we, we should be supporting it anyway. But we, you know, it's it's important to support it. So. Definitely stick around with that conversation, right? Last thing we're going to talk about before we get some sort of conversation around picks and stuff for this Christmas week um, is the following. It is the big one. Which team is going to mess it up over the next few weeks in the playoff situations? I'm, I'm going to start off and just say this. Two words. Tennessee Titans. The Titans are going to brick the bed the next three weeks of the season. The Jaguars are winning the AFC South. And, I mean, you got to feel for Vrabel. GM's gone. The question, I mean, if, we're, if, we, if we started off this broadcast talking about Brandon Staley and his job security, and I know Vrabel's most likely say if he's a great coach, I love his energy, but we have to have that same conversation in January if that happens. Mark, uh, who, who do you think could be in trouble? I think it's the Patriots right now. They're sitting in the eighth seed, and I think they had their opportunity and they missed it. They're obviously extremely run heavy. We've been through all the different narratives around uh, Mac Jones. I yeah, I just think they're even though they have the tiebreaker over the Jets, who you know are still in play as well at the ninth. They're only one game back, but look at their schedule. They have the Bengals, the Dolphins, the Bills, and I did mention this at the top of the show, so I'm glad that we came back to it. I think the Patriots' defense is so good that it's excellent that we get to see them against three playoff-bound teams, the Bengals, the Dolphins, and the Bills, because I guess those teams are going to learn something about themselves playing against such a ferocious defense, number one DVOA, according to Football Outsiders. It's going to be great to see, and we're going to be able to comment on how these teams do, especially back-to-back-to-back. We'll be able to kind of compare as we kind of head into the playoffs. Maybe there's an upset there, thanks to the defense. But I think that's where my excitement lies with the New England Patriots at the moment. I just want to see what problems they can cause other teams with the defense. But I think as in terms of how that offense is going, we saw they couldn't get across the line against the Raiders the other day. They almost pulled it out. That win would have been massive. We obviously know that play was one of the craziest we've seen all year uh, when it was tr- tossed back to Chandler Jones as the clock expired. But um, yeah, there you go for me. The Patriots, I think, are, uh, their race is run. What do you reckon, Michaela? I think the the Jets probably at uh, what are they sitting at seven and seven, and then they're playing the Bengals, the Dolphins, and the Bills are going to lose all them games. Um, so oh, they're going to. So you have them losing out. Yeah, a hundred percent. Those, those two gonna... teams have the same. The Jets and Pages both have the Bengals, Dolphins, and Bills. I know how the schedule set up so that you're playing the AFC East, but that's kind of crazy because they could have had the same schedule to kind of try and get in. It does look like then that we're agreeing that the AFC has been. Oh, sorry. No, I was actually looking at the Patriots' schedule. Sorry, the Jets have the Jags, the Seahawks, and the Dolphins, but they're still going to lose all them. 
Oh. <laughs> like maybe they can win against the Seahawks. They're definitely going to lose against the Jags. I take 100%. Jags are red hot right now. Trevor Lawrence is showing everyone why. We all said he was a generational talent. Seahawks have kind of fallen out of the way a bit. We were all shocked that they started off the season so well and now they've just proven what we all said in the beginning um and then they have the dolphins the dolphins should mm, well two is kind of choking a little bit so maybe but i i don't see the jets making the playoffs i think they're yeah the defense is kind of holding them in it a little bit but yeah i i, I think the the jets aren't aren't gonna make it right picks for christmas so you got a full set of games on christmas eve Christmas Day. Let's just talk about one game each very quickly before we wrap off here and start up with some presents. The Dallas Cowboys are beating the Philadelphia Eagles on Christmas Eve. I'm leaving. No, you're not. I'm going to leave. It's happening. It's it's happening. Mm -hmm. And the hype, the Cowboys hype will come to a new level when Dak Prescott throws four (laughs) passing touchdowns. Yeah. You do remember the game yesterday where they got beaten by the Jaguars. I do. But the the whole point is... The, 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 this is the Dallas Cowboys, Michaela. It's December. It's Cowboys season. It's hype season. And then they'll go one and done in the playoffs. This is what it is. The Cowboys are beating the Eagles. It's not even like I've done this for like a social video. I've sent this an upset. It's not even an upset. You know, it's not. But I guess in the way, Mark, that the Eagles have played, it is an upset because they've been so good. But there was times against Chicago where they did struggle a little. So I think I think the Cowboys will beat the Eagles. Any game standing out to you this week? Like I said, it's kind of I'm I'm gonna I'd imagine a lot of my picks are gonna be the same as the the betting favorite. Um the the Patriots Bengals. I just wanna see what a red hot Bengals offense would be able to do against the defense. So sorry to repeat myself, but that's the one that I kind of have my eye on because I think that yeah, the Cowboys Eagles game, it would be the best thing for the NFL if the Cowboys were able to beat the Eagles because that's the storyline that we need going into the off season. I mean or sorry, into the postseason, the Eagles will be going in with one loss on the record and, you know, feeling pretty much untouched um, in the NFC. So I think that's what's exciting. And then I guess the the Lions against the Panthers, I said the other day about how the, the Panthers run game could see, well, it was mainly that the NFC is so poor, but I want to see the Lions back, bounce back and get some points and keep this playoff push going. Michaela, take it home. Any game standing out to you this week? Well, you kind of nicked mine. It would have been the Eagles and the Cowboys because I'm going, obviously, the completely opposite direction to you. I'm very biased. So I think the Eagles are going to prove to everyone that the Cowboys are a little bit of chokers. Um, Dak Prescott isn't the best at times. Um, but you've you've but, but yeah, it's nice to have a different opinion to you so I can go with that game as well. Obviously, I'm very, very excited for that game because that's probably the toughest opponent the Eagles have had in a little while. Other than that, I'd be looking at the Vikings and the Giants game because the Vikings, are, are, they obviously struggled. They shouldn't have struggled against the Colts last week. There's no excuse why. It was great that they've we, we've all witnessed the greatest comeback. Well, not the greatest, the biggest comeback in NFL history. We've all witnessed it. It was un, an unbelievable game, but... They shouldn't have been in that situation in the first place. And I'd like to see the Giants. I I always thought the Giants were a decent side. I'm surprised that they're doing so well. I'm happy that they seem to have found a head coach. The only thing missing now is the quarterback. But I think the Giants can cause the Vikings problems. And if I was if I was betting, I wouldn't bet on that game. I'd go for another game because it's a, it's a coin flip for me. But yeah, I'm looking forward to that game on top of Eagles and Cowboys. Interesting, interesting. Right. Um, I will say about the, about the Giants, the decision that went against the Commanders on Sunday Night Football was an absolute disgrace. However, we're about an hour into the podcast, so I can say that. Um, this has been really, really, it's really, really good crack. And uh, obviously, we've got first Night Football, full set of games, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, you've got three games. Uh, the game on Christmas Day, which I'm sure Mark's going to watch at one in the morning, two in the morning, is that Bucks. Uh, Cardinals game, it's, which I know we're all so excited for, and un- unbelievable. I it's the game just gone by the Cardinals Broncos. I don't know did I say this on the broadcast, but it was the first time I ever, the first time ever in my Cardinals history had the game on in front of me. It wasn't my focus. I had it on mute and I had red zone on because. So now it's a, it, we're at the point where uh, the 2018 season was miserable to watch, but at least now there's like a quarterback and stuff in place. But uh, sorry, this is going on too long. I hear the jingle bells are going. Thanks for editing those in, Michael. That was a great show. I'm not doing that. Okay, fair enough. Fair <laughs> You've enough. committed it. <laughs> <laughs> right here. Um, folks, if you, if you are listening to this, thank you so much. At NFL Ireland on all social media handles. We'll be back. Um, well, 
I'm trying to get these ones to record something on Stephen's Day or Boxing Day if you're in the north, but I, I don't know. Like, I mean, <laughs> probably not going to happen, but we'll, we'll be back at some point next week. And um, you can check out our bonus podcast with Polly Clifford as well. If you're listening to the podcast, please uh, really appreciate it if you do subscribe to the podcast, maybe leave it a wee review, five star rating on Apple Podcasts. If you can even follow us on Spotify, it makes a difference. It literally puts food on the table or in tabla um, but look for now Michael McQuaid Mark Hogan Michaela Fagan thank you all so much have a great Christmas see you soon